So who fell asleep in that one? <laughs> Nobody. Good. Okay. So this is the important part. We've got to go on. It's important questions, the important facts, and we have to be fair to both sides. Um, I'm excited to moderate the questions for tonight. I just ask you to ask me the questions, and I'm sure they'll be appropriate, and we'll pass them off to Mr. Jeffrey to answer. After that, we'll have uh, time to ask questions of the film producers. And uh, with that said, are there any questions in the house tonight? What would you like to ask, Mr. Jeffrey? I'd like to ask about uh, recycling, and uh, you're looking to 60%, or he's looking to 60% recycling. Why wouldn't he encourage having a large bottle tax so that we reach that 95% that we see in Michigan? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know that Michigan's rate is 95%. If you tell me it is, okay. Uh, I, I think um, uh, I finally have our industry time to think beyond uh, bottle bills because uh, if you collected every single beverage container, uh, in the United States, you still have half of the beverage container or half the containers of plastic out there. They're not being collected because our, our recycling systems are so bad in America. Suzanne Woods, uh, who I'm on the board of Keep America Beautiful, and, and Suzanne Woods, who's the senior vice president of uh, environmental programs for KAB, is here, and she can talk to you in more detail about this. But I believe that that in the long run, we, what we really need is extended producer responsibility. We have, we have uh, about 12% away from home recycling availability in the United States. We have 50% of people who do not have access to curbside recycling, and only 50% of the people who do recycle regularly. So, so we have a huge issue, and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna need to collect multiple streams of material over the next 10 or 15 years. If you look at the number of streams of material that are being collected in Europe today, we're, we're, we're pathetic in America. So, so look, bottle bills work. There's no question about it. They're expensive, but they work. But they only work for beverage containers. And if you think about the things that we're going to need to collect and recycle in the next 15 years, the streams of material so that we, so that we don't have waste. 50% uh, of what's in landfills today is printed materials. That stuff could be recycled, but we don't have a system for it. So, you know, my belief is that every single manufacturer ultimately is going to have to participate and extended responsibility after, after the consumers bought this material. The problem we have today in our society is when, when, you, when you all buy it, we lose control of it. And, and you uh, are going to determine what's done, what's done with it. And, and you're going to determine what's done with it based on education and based on availability and based on convenience. So, so what I see is everybody who's, who is manufacturing material that can be recycled needs to have an oar in the water on getting it back. And what we're going to need to do is put a small tax on everybody who's producing this material so that we can provide the funding for the types of recycling programs that we need in America, both, both at home and away from home. A question up here in the front. Has there been any uh, movement for materials that are completely compostable for beverages to be contained in? Um, the, the, nothing's really working well right now that, that people can prove for, for the kind of materials that you're putting beverages in. Uh, even if that happens, uh, the, the energy that it takes to make this stuff the first time from, from virgin materials, that, that even if it composts, it, you know, we're not running out of landfill space in America. We need to think in terms of, of life cycle analysis for these materials. When you take, oh, when you burn oil in your car, it's gone forever. We burn 21 million barrels of oil in the United States every single day. 80% of it is in your car. It's gone. When you make a polymer of plastic out of that, that oil, it can be here forever, but we have to get it back and use it again. If we, if we get it back and use it again, we save 50% of the energy that, that it takes to, make vir to use virgin material. My, my belief is that, that compostable materials are not the answer. What we need to do is, is use materials that we can recycle and use again. If, if any of you have read Bill McDonough's book, Cradle to Cradle, I think he really has the idea for the future of, of, uh, of waste in America. There shouldn't be any. There's no, there's no waste in nature. There shouldn't be any uh, in, in manufacturing. 
but there is because we're not making our materials the right way and we're not getting them back and using them again even when we do. PET is a great material. It can be recycled infinitely, but we got to get it back. Maybe there could be a follow-up question on that. Sir, in the back. Um, I'd like to know how much resource Nestle has invested in, uh, in the pursuit of some non-petroleum-based uh, containers. Um, not necessarily from antiquated glass, <coughs> but uh, like uh, the woman ahead said, something uh, biodegradable. Um, I saw that there was a release from Oxford University last week where some of the chemists there were have discovered a kind of plastic uh, face from corn, which would be potentially even cheaper to produce than petroleum. Well, we've got corn-based materials in the United States, but they, 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 they're barrier, uh, they don't work from a barrier standpoint. They're, they're very permeable. It, it takes twice the, twice the amount of plastic that we would use in one of our bottles to make a corn-based uh, PLA bottle. And, and if it sits on the shelf for, for six weeks, it looks anorexic. It, it, it just, they just suck in. It, there's too much air permeates. We do not have, we do not have alternate materials. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and in addition to that, I don't think these alternate materials should come from a food crop. We're going to have a hard enough time feeding the world in, 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 in 30 years. So, so but, but, but look, there are, there are, uh, there are uh, materials right now being, uh, being produced in Brazil, uh, uh, waste from sugar cane. Uh, that, that is going into to, uh, is, is replacing the, the ethylene glycol that goes into uh, the PET, and and uh, that looks promising, but it's very expensive. There is there, there is no there's no uh, on the horizon. It does not look like there's going to be manufacturing infrastructure anytime soon to, to make this more viable. But yes, I believe these things, I, I believe in the next 10 or 15 years, we're, we're certainly seeing solutions here, but we have, to, we, we have these legacy systems in, in our country, an oil refinery that, that was, was in the documentary. We, we have to decide we're going to shut a, a refinery down. Well, of course, the, the praxlene is produced in that, in that refinery is probably 4% uh, of what the, what the refinery produces. But, but it ain't, it's producing lots of other things. But we, ha we have to have a system. We have to have a, 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 a commercialization of these processes. But yes, do I think we're going to see alternative materials for PET sometime in the next 10 or 15 years? Yes, absolutely I do. does not run campaigns or ads promoting bottled water as better than tap water. However, shortly after that, you launched a campaign called Born Better, in which you're somewhat, to us, seems like your bottled spring water is somewhat better than other waters. So I was wondering if you could speak to that reconciliation. And then also to comment on what Stephanie said earlier, the transcript I do have of you speaking in September to a group of reporters and investors about how you're um, basically thinking as um, our public water systems fail here in the United States. You're looking towards um, people in the United States going to bottled infiltration for their pure water needs and looking at your business success on that. And I'd be more than happy to share that with you to remind you about that. Well, I looked at, I looked at Mr. Mr. Jeffrey. It, it, does that seem like a fair question? Yeah, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer the question. Uh, uh, what I, I used the example of China. You know, we have, we have a $300 billion deficit on, on our municipal uh, uh, water systems in America, primarily because water is, is not priced at what the real cost of it is for, for consumers today. Uh, when, when, when I was asked the question, do I believe our industry is going to, to proceed, I, I, I said yes, and, and that, I believe, is one of the reasons. If you look at China today, China, China has gray water. They, they, like, they're never going to have landlines in that country. Everybody's on a cell phone. They're not going to have municipal infrastructure for, for water. In China,